August 1st, 2023. This is the S&P 500 E-Futures Mini on the Ninja Trader 8 platform. It's a 2000 tick chart. This is what things look like today. You can look down at the descriptions below to see where I timestamped where I thought I saw setups as well as where I took my trades. There's only one real piece of economic data that looked like it might have moved the market. It came out at around 7 a.m. Pacific Standard, which is about right here. It was the ISM manufacturing PMI as well as the job openings. And it happened right around here. And as you can see, the market looked like it kind of sold off on that news. The pre-market highs is marked here as well as the pre-market lows here. The pre-market lows, it looked like it respected it somewhat, had three touches. There are small little breakthroughs, but for the most part, you can trust that this is after the third touch, that there's some kind of support here. The highs were a little more confusing. I saw a potential high here where it touched once and twice in the pre-market. You could argue for a third time. Definitely didn't make it all the way back up to the pre-market highs. And then there were some consolidation areas as well as some swings. I'm going to go into the trades now. I only took one trade today, which is right here. It turned out to be green. It was a second entry long and a triple test, or what I saw as a potential second entry long and a triple test. Overall, I didn't find too many setups to mark that I really liked that were high probability. I will say, yes, there are a lot of second entries, second entry long, second entry shorts or failures, lower highs, et cetera. But when I found them, I didn't think they were high probability. So they weren't, in my opinion, uh, safe to trade. I mean, with more experience, I might be able to see through some of the setups a little bit clearer and be more confident taking those trades. But at the time being, I wasn't able to just based upon my skill level. So in the pre-market, you can see Started off here, prices sold off, did a small pullback, and then it came back down. The first setup I saw, which happened right at the second minute after the open, was a new low here. It's a first entry short, pulls up, second entry short. Now, the second entry short, and it fails. It hasn't technically failed yet because it has to break above this candle. So technically, a failure happens here. But when I saw this, I was wondering if it was going to be a failure because I did draw this line here and was confirmed by this point. When this candle formed, I was thinking there's a line here, and while this one was jumping up and down, I saw it as a possible failed second entry short. Since this one closed above the EMA, there's enough room to the highs, but I wanted a confirmation setup just because it was the second minute. As you can see, it's well, actually, it's the first minute. This is the second minute here. It's still in the first minute of the trading day, and there's already three candles, four candles. I guess you could argue five candles. So I wasn't sure. It is a very choppy right at the open. So I want to wait for a confirmation trade. You actually get a confirmation trade right here. So it's actually a new high, first entry long, second entry long. As soon as it breaks above, it confirms a second entry long. It also confirmed this failed second entry short here. It also made a higher low right here. So all these things going for it, when I saw this in real time, I saw this occurring. I said, okay, there's a potential second entry long occurring. This Boom, creates a second entry long. And I thought, okay, this is definitely also potentially a higher low here. I just grouped the labels together. And if I wanted to enter, I was thinking I put it one tick above this guy here. This is 4599.75. So it's actually 4600 even. I saw it. I wasn't sure. I hesitated because this is still the second minute of the trading day. And I saw it, analyzed it. I thought it was probably a pretty decent trade, but I didn't pull the trigger fast enough. Because as you can see, it's debatable whether I would have gotten filled on this candle or not. And if I wanted to take it here, there's enough room to scalp out the one point before I hit the top here. So definitely when this one formed, I felt it was too late to try to chase this trade. If I did chase it and I had my entry still there, I think this candle would have filled me. It would have given me a little bit of, of a question of whether it was going to break through. But the setup looked pretty good and then it flashed up. So definitely this was a good trade here. Unfortunately, I missed it. If I entered one tick above here, I would have you know, gotten filled probably on this red candle, less likely the screen candle, and I would have gotten my scalp on the screen candle. <clears throat> then prices continue moving up. I had to just let that one go. I do see another setup here. I see a first entry long. Here, when this forms, I was thinking there's a potential second entry long. It's bouncing off the EMA. This is also a possible trade. It's a good signal bar. And I thought this is actually the first break of this channel. So it's the first break. It bounced off the EMA. It looks like it might want to come back up and test the highs. But nothing says it has to. It could easily just reverse on the next candle. This next candle, we know it's green because we saw it. But it could easily just broken through the EMA and continue down. However, there has a few things going for it that I thought was good. 
was it is about to form a second entry long so good signal bar plenty of room to get to the top it's following this channel so far so it looks like it at least wants to come up and test this high and i like that ema is holding strength or holding it as a support so this candle likely would have gotten me filled and it's debatable whether i would have gotten out in time on this one and i would have had to sit through this and let's see let's see this is a 46 0325. So I would have taken it at 460350. So I would need to get out at 460475, which is right here. So this is where I would have had my limit order to exit. It's debatable to whether I would actually have gotten out my one point. It made a double top and then it would have reversed back down. And for sure it would have I would have been stopped out here because I'm pretty sure I would have kept my stop loss one tick below this guy. So it's unsure, even though it's a possible trade, I think it was a decent setup. Fortunately, uh, well, I'll never know if it would have worked out for me. Then prices continue chopping. It kind of consolidates as a resistance up here. So I saw one touch. This wasn't confirming anything, but when I saw this double top here, I drew this blue line thinking, okay, there's some kind of resistance here, potentially a trading range, but the trading range lower end, it's hard to really know where it'd be. So I just left it as potential resistance up here. And if it is trading range, I would just leave it down here for now. Prices continue working. It's just as a new high. Technically, it's a new high here, but I count this as a new high. First entry long. Technically, it makes a second entry long, but I just don't like this setup yet. Prices continue going down. Pops around. It looks like it was going to get up to the EMA and get rejected, but it never touched the EMA. There was no setup here, so I had to leave it alone. Just sit tight. It does confirm the bottom of this range now because it touches once, touches two, two, well, two or three times depending on how you did the count, but I just counted it as two. So I'm thinking, okay, there's potentially a range from this blue to this bottom gray. It's just chopping around. I'm wondering if it's going to make it, it has enough strength to make it back to the top. There's second entries in here, but they're just not very clean. So I just keep waiting. It breaks out, it comes back, it flashes through, breaks not only through this through this ascending channel because of the overshoot on this side, it created a complementary overshoot on this side and also broke through the EMA. So here it's hard to know if it actually continues upwards to go long or if this is a true break and it's going to actually continue downwards. Nevertheless, there's no real setup here. But the wait, I do see a second first entry long. It makes kind of like a double top and depending on how you did the count, it could be a triple test, but there's no setup. I mean, technically there's a second entry long here, new high, first entry long, pull back. This makes a second entry long here, but here it actually takes one tick, actually meet, meets the same level. And it'd be risky to take a long here, knowing that you might have a resistance here. Prices then continue chopping. I get to sit on my hands. I saw this channel going down. There's actually one leg pulled back, second leg. And you could say it's another leg, but I just saw this one big, uh, big bold leg moving downwards. And it kind of falls into this consolidation, it looks like. Chops around, there is an overshoot. I saw that there's potentially a resistance up here, but I also saw as this was forming a potential another resistance here. I wasn't sure, but it didn't matter because I actually saw and took my first trade here. I saw a new high here, first entry long, pulls back. It creates this. It picked one tick below, closes very strong, and I'm believing that there's going to be a second entry long here. I also like this as potentially a triple test. Now, you could argue this is probably just two touches, but I saw it as potentially one, two, and this is probably the third test because I was thinking of something closer to this. So it was like one touch, two touch, third touch. And then I later adjusted it up to here. So I saw the second entry long. I got my order ready. I like the signal bar. It picked up one and came back down, so I'm still waiting. And here, when it started forming, it flashed down first. I said, I want to enter this trade. It actually went above where my entry was. And I dropped my order, not one tick above. I want a little more safety. So I actually dropped it to the high of this original signal bar. And it danced around and it came down, picked me up, flashed up. And as you can see, it closed near the high and actually where I was able to get my quick scalp. Looks like um, if I wanted to go for two points, it looks like there's just enough for two points, probably on this red candle. But it's chopping, it's in this consolidation zone, and then it breaks out below. I'm just sitting on my hands again now. Prices continue moving up. I do want to remark that price action was a little slow today, even though there are some movements and some swings. 
I felt the overall price action was really, really slow. I'll show you why in a second. Then prices continue moving. I don't have this yellow channel yet, but I did see this measured move one leg up to about here, pulls back, makes the second leg up. This is really complete to measure move until about right here. But then I also saw this as potential one big leg, this blue guy right here. And then I put it down as a potential start of a second leg. Cops around. I don't see a good clean second entry. I do see a second entry short here. So it's actually a new low here. Pulls up. Technically, you have a second entry short made here per the count. But I count this as just one big leg. Just one leg up. Breaks out of this channel. First, that first move down. So that's my first entry short. Moves up. And I'm thinking there's a potential second entry short here because it's also hitting the midline of this trading range. But you have to keep in mind this trading range itself seems too large. So to give too much weight to this midline is a little bit dangerous because why would I give it too much, I guess, why would I uh, give it too much weighting when this is probably a better resistance here? But I gave it a little bit of weighting just because even though, you know, we never came back to touch the highs, I saw it as a midline. I saw a potential reaction point. And what I also noticed is this second entry short, it is like a break of this channel going up, broke out, made a new high, and it made a nice clean measured leg on this blue line. So it's actually this big leg up here, even though there's these two legs inside this big green leg, these two orange legs inside this big blue leg, pulls back, made one push down, pulls back, second push down, that's one move down. So it's a very big visual first entry short, comes up second entry short. I like that it was made the measure move. I saw it as a potential test, but I wasn't sure. So I left it alone. There is enough room to get down to the EMA. Looks like it would have worked. I wanted a confirmation setup and I get a confirmation set up here. It's a higher, excuse me, a lower high. So this high is slightly lower than that one. And when it closed so super bearish down here, I think this was a worthwhile trade, but this happened very quickly. So I skipped it because you can see it happened at 26.44 and then this candle closed at 27.10. So this is only in the best span of about 25 seconds. So this candle did everything it needed to do. And this candle did everything it needed to do. While analyzing this, had I wanted to take the trade, I don't know I would have taken it down here. I likely would have taken it probably up here, right where this second entry short. Well, second entry short is confirmed here. And I probably would have put my trade up here. If that were the case, I would never have gotten filled. And to take it down here, I would have gotten filled, but I felt it would have been a lot riskier. And here, it looks like it would have been just enough to get a scalp out, but I wasn't in a trade, so it doesn't matter. The price is continue chopping around. Comes up. It seems to be respecting this midline. I thought there was a potential trading range here, so I saw one touch, two touch, three touch, triple test. Comes up. It breaks down through, and I'm thinking maybe there's a fail breakout. It comes up. It looks like it's going to be a fail breakout. Comes up and into the trading range again, so it confirms the fail breakout. Unfortunately, I didn't see a good setup until after the fact, because this is a new high. It's first entry long pulls back second entry long, but these signal bars are pretty, pretty not that great to make me feel confident taking a long. So you did see one leg down, pulls back, second leg down, let's do these orange lines here, but it exceeded it. So I wasn't hundred percent sure I had to leave it alone. I was thinking maybe there's a higher low. Fortunately, you get a higher low right here, but it feels too far now. And what I would be going long would be going long into this potential resistance. So there isn't that much room to scalp out. So I just had to leave it alone. Looks like if I put my entry one tick right here, it'd be 64,475. So to get a one point scalp, I need to get up to 46,05. Actually, 06. So I'd have to get all the way up to here to ensure a clean scalp, but I wouldn't have gotten it and likely would have gotten stopped out. Then it chops out into the close. Also, this is the last 10 minutes of the day, which I didn't really want to risk trading. But why do I say it was slow? Because if you look from here, this is 8 o'clock all the way over to 9 o'clock. This is all the price action. Then 9 to 11, which is right here. There's not much price action. Yes, there were there was movement, but it wasn't clean. But overall, there was some trades there, but I couldn't find too many that I felt comfortable taking the trade on. So I ended up with just one trade for the day, and I just have to be happy with that. There are a few trades that I thought were possibilities that I either didn't take because I didn't recognize them in time or I hesitated, so I was a little slow. So ideally with time, I'll get better and get faster. So hopefully that was helpful.